May I welcome to the stage Ai Weiwei. Welcome to Pittsburgh. I feel so happy, and it's like a dream. I can be in Andy Warhol's hometown, and I see the energy here is like a community. It's really like a home. You know, it's a very strange feeling. You don't get that kind of feeling very often. And also, it's like a dream. I can be showing in with Andy Warhol. His uh, everything, you know, his lifestyle, his work. His life is like a mythology to contemporary artists. But uh, to have a show with him is still, I don't believe it. Did you ever meet Andy Warhol in New York? I, from far away, I saw him several times. You know, it's always you hear people say Andy is here. Then you realize he, you know, you can see his hair somewhere in the crowd. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I never really approached him. You know, I was a shy young student. But I love uh, Andy because he used a very common language, which is not easy for artists uh, to to speak that kind of language, and can directly relate to his feelings. Warhol, when he's alive, he's never been really accepted because people think he's commercial and、uh, too shallow. But now we can see that Andy Warhol is the most brave person among the artists. He really opened a new era for all the art of today. And、uh, you know, he's the、uh, first one to use social media. He tried to create social media, but he's 50 years ahead of his time. And today, I think he's the most important artist for our generation. And I can safely say that you are working at those same levels, and that you're changing the world, which is the underlying story of this exhibition. And that is, we looked more and more at the reactions against Andy Warhol throughout his career. He too was viewed as somehow desecrating the very notion of art, and this is something that you get constantly as well. The work we see behind us right now is one of your urns painted with the Coca-Cola logo, and this is something that makes you an important contemporary artist. But it also elicits a fair amount of concern amongst many people, who question why you decided to destroy an otherwise priceless antiquity. To turn it into contemporary art with the brash idea of putting a Coca-Cola logo on top of it, of course Warhol did this as well. What was your drive in order to make that work? For me, at that time, I don't really know how to make a painting to to really please people. So I think maybe a painting on something expensive, which can attract some attention. This is a true tradition of Andy Warhol, and his desire to understand other people's desire. He tried to imagine why people have those things, and he tried to get his hands on those. And I have the same kind of problem. I look at objects from three, four, five thousand years ago, and I always try to think why it takes such a long time to make something like this. What do you think would Andy have thought about your work? I think Warhol would like it. He said the pop art is about liking things. You know, he likes the beauty and is very sensitive about this. In the exhibition, there is a gallery dedicated to flowers and politics, political beauty. You will see a huge wall of over 600 photographs of flowers that you shot on a daily basis, putting a new bouquet of flowers into the basket of your bicycle parked just outside of your studio in Beijing, representing every single day that your passport was confiscated by the government, thus placing you under house arrest. What compelled you to take an otherwise horrific notion and put beauty in its place? Basically, I was.、Uh... Like hopeless, you know. I there's no discussion, no, no way you can communicate, and I was under very strong surveillance control, and people only give you clear instructions about what not to do. Our studio have、uh, most surveillance cameras. There's about two dozen of them, and our room even all being bugged. But we still trying to function as a normal. We trying to bring what is most common beauty into our life. 
I think those things are so important, not to become an extremist, not to become too radical, but rather to go back to human feelings, you know. Well, it still provides hope, that there is always hope for the future. And part of the installation, in homage to your action, is to put a fresh bouquet into that basket of the actual bike in the exhibition on a daily basis. So it will change every day just as you made it change every day in real time. And to see that work in direct proximity to Andy's amazing flower paintings from 1964 will force people to see Warhol in perhaps a different way. That happens quite a lot throughout the show, so I think that our regular visitors will see Andy in a very new light thanks to you and your work and your interventions in the space. Here in Pittsburgh, I think we're even more thrilled to have you here because this city is based on an immigrant culture where people came from all corners of the world to build the American dream. The Warhalla family certainly was very indicative of that, coming from Eastern Europe to make a better life here. You met our fantastic mayor, Bill Peduto, who attended the reception for the Zodiac Heads. And Mayor Peduto has made a commitment here in Pittsburgh to welcome as many refugees as we possibly can take. I'm very impressed. I could never imagine a mayor so bravely speak out uh, about his true feelings and have such a strong support of his fellow citizens. This town makes me really feel some kind of confidence about the uh, United States because I know what's it like when you have to move and you have nothing left. My father was a poet, and he was punished by what he's writing. And uh, the moment I was born, he was exiled. So I grew up in this kind of exile condition. Now you see refugees, and it's not one or two, it's 60 million refugees in the world. This is a tragedy of our human condition today, and anybody trying to pretend not to know it it's a crime, it's part of the crime. So we all have to know it, we cannot pretend we don't know it. So as an artist and somebody being called activist artist, I have some kind of obligation to speak out. Um, that kind of person can easily be involved very deeply, which is really my problem. Thank you for having that problem, because <laughs> it's... It's so absolutely critical that you, as an artist, are bearing witness to the realities and the atrocities that are happening in that region of the world right now. And here in the United States, at least through our news media outlets, we're not getting the full story. If you follow Weiwei's Instagram, which is one of the most powerful vehicles of your voice and your messaging, you're documenting everything that you see. And the images that I've seen through you are shocking, to say the very least. You certainly hinted at Warhol's invention of social media. Do you want to talk a little bit about why Instagram is so important to your practice and to you? It's so efficient. You can reach out to people you don't know and they never would meet you. You invite people to join the discussion and as artists you take the political situation and you make a commentary. You give some new definitions about our condition. At the same time, I invite people to join the discussion to realize those conditions. So I think this is fantastic. It creates such a democratic landscape. And I don't know anything better than this. What do you think is next? What's your next big project? To go back to my hotel and have a, take a shower, have a nice rest. <laughs> that sounds absolutely amazing. We want to thank you from the bottom of all of our hearts for being here with us in Pittsburgh. So, may we please give Ai Weiwei a great round of applause. <laughs>